Hey guys, so I'm about to show you how to create the user groups and um, add the groups to the pseudo group and then to generate the SSH key. Um, very simple steps. So just kind of follow along. Um, I would use, um, let me just use one of these. So I'm going to start up my VM. Um, so I'm starting up the VM. Um, I've shown this in previous videos, how to kind of like use the IDs to target a specific machine and all of that. So nothing strange there. So I'm starting up a VM and It'll be up in a bit. Creating the users and the user groups and all of that. It's a very simple process. Um, so just follow along with what I'm doing and you will get it right. So this is this VM. It's It has started. Um, so let me just SSH into it. So there we go, I'm in. Now, I would create, um, I'll just create some random um, user groups, you know, according to what we already have in the project, it says um, create three user groups. So I'll just zoom this in. It says create three groups admin support and engineering and add the admin group to the sudoers um now as some people may have noticed the admin group is already existing at least as far as vagrant is concerned if you check and you try to create the admin user group you see that it's already existing so don't panic when you try to create it and it doesn't work and it tells you admin group already exists that is fine. It's a normal behavior. Don't panic. Don't go into panic mode. Okay. Um, now let's create. So for example, if you try to create that user group, you do group add, and then let's create the admin group. So admin. So you see group add admin already exists. Don't panic. It is normal, please. Now, um, if you try to create the other groups, I think I already have those groups on here. So it might tell me it already exists as well. Um, group add engineering, engineering, engineering. All right, I'm just concatenating the commands. I'm like, I'm running them at the same time. That's why you see me doing something like and. I can just run group add support, then go and run group add engineering. It will still work. It's the same thing. Or I can just do it once. It's the same. All right. So you, I'm getting this error because this Vagrant user needs to run these commands as um, sudo, as a sudo user. So I will do sudo group add support sudo group add engineering so I'll run it okay so it has created the groups and you can see what has been done you could easily do tail um sorry you have to add sudo as well because the grant user needs elevated privileges for you to run. So always remember that most times, anytime you get things like permission, permissions, permissions, error, it is because as this default Vagrant user, you need to run certain commands as sudo. Don't forget that. So don't, that's another thing not to panic about. I've seen people panic a lot about this. Once they see permissions denied, they go into a panic mode. So just type sudo 
add the sudo command. If you are running as root, then you do not need sudo. But if you are running as another user, then you need sudo. That is the way Linux works. It's just like on Windows, um, you're trying to, maybe you're trying to edit a system file or you're trying to do something in command prompt and it tells you permissions denied. It is because you are not running command prompt as an administrator. So you need to right click on that thing and then run it as administrator. So the same logic applies here, right? So um, sudo tail um, etc group. So this is where user groups are stored in Linux, right? So here you go. You have you have the support user group created. You have the engineering user group created. Okay, and here you also have the admin that already exists. So don't don't fear that you know the admin exists. So what should we now do? Hey, it already exists. There's nothing more for you to do. So um, the next thing you need to do now is they said um, you should add the admin to the sudoers group. Now, because the admin already exists, I can bet you that the admin is already in um, the sudoers um, file with some permission. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So you run sudo vi sudo etc sudoers okay so the reason you are doing this is first of all like i said run the command as sudo now if you open up this file it actually specifies that you should run or edit this file at using the vi sudo command so that's just what we are doing and i'll show you so can you see this file must be edited with the vi sudo command as roots, you know, so, so even if you're using the root user, you'll still use this vi sudo command. Okay. Now, if we look down in the file, you would see that the admin group here already exists. You can see it already exists. It's already in this sudo as file. The only difference is it doesn't have similar permissions <clears throat> like the sudo group. That we already have so this is the sudo group and you can see that it has its own permissions but you can see that it's not exactly the same they're not the same so the only thing you have to do here is just modify this one to look like that of the sudo that is all you need to do that's all just that and then you save control o then press enter then press Control X. That's it. We're finished. We're done with that. Now the next step is to create users in each group. So I'll create users in each group. Now, when you're creating the users, by default, um, Ubuntu uses a template, a skeleton file when it's creating users. So you might discover that you create a user and the user does not have a home directory it is normal because that is what is specified in the skeleton file now you can modify that skeleton file to in to you know to specify how you want users to be created okay you can modify it but i recommend that you just leave it as is since you can still change what a user has when you create them now to create the user, I'll, I'll start with the admin group. To create a user, you would just type in, as you would see, I'm still running as the Vagrant user. So I'll say sudo, again, sudo, then the group. I want to add this user to the admin group. Now to create a home directory, the same way um, this, the, the, to create the home directory at the same time when creating the user, you add a dash M flag. So this dash M specifies that Linux should create this user with the home directory. So dash M and 
I want this user to have a bash shell and not .sh shell. I want the user to have a bash shell and instead of an sh shell. So I'll do hyphen s and specify the type of shell being bash. And then now I can add the username. So uh, let me just use uh, Tosin. So I'm creating a user called Tosin to have a bash shell and Tosin should have her home directory and she should belong to the home, I'm sorry, to belong to the admin group, whether it's a he or a she. Um, you understand what I mean? Um, okay, so th for this user, um, I think we need to rotate the flag. So I'll put this, I'll take this here instead. Oh, there we go. This is what's missing. It's not really about the position. I forgot to add the user mod, user add rather, user add. So yeah, don't forget that that's an error. So as you would see, it didn't understand what exactly I was trying to do because I forgot to add this user add um, um, command. So I've added this now. Um, the arrangement is still as before. There's no particular order. You can put the admin group, you can put the group specification after, you can put it before this M or after the bash or whatever, or however. The most important thing is Tosin should come last in the queue. Tosin is the username, so it should be the last thing. If not, it will create the user and ignore the rest of the flags. It, it can possibly happen. Okay, so I'll run this now. And there, Tosin has been created. And we can create the one, the other users. So I'll create the other users. Remember to change the group. So change this to support. And I'll change the username to um, Charles. Okay, then I'll create a third user. I'll change the username to um, Cynthia. I'm just using Cynthia. Okay, and then I'll change the group. This is the primary group. Okay, engineering. All right, so I am done. I have added all of the users. Okay, now the next thing is to generate an SSH key for um, the user in the admin group. And the user in the admin group is Tosin, right? Um, we can actually see the users we've created. So to see the users we've created, you run sudo um, tail, let's do tail. Instead of doing cat, you can use cat. So you can do this. Okay, you can do this. What happens is it will show you everything in that file, which is a long list. But if I just want to see like the most um, recent 10 thereabouts, I can use tail, you know. It shows less information, but at least I can see that I've created Tosin, Charles, and Cynthia. So if I've created Tosin, Charles, and Cynthia, and um, this is the home folders, the home directories have been created, and the shell is here, and you will see Tosin belongs to the admin group 116. If you remember from before, when we um, viewed the group, the user group file, you could see that the admin user group had a, an ID of 116. So. Um, now we've created that. The next thing is to generate the SSH key for Tosin. Um, so let's switch to the Tosin user. So I'll type sudo su 
hyphen tosin. So now I have switched to tosin. So this is tosin. This is the previous user and this is tosin now. Then I would generate the SSH key by doing SSH key gen and press enter. So it's asking me where I want to save the file. I am fine with the default directory. This is a default directory. So I'll suggest that you leave it as it is. Try not to mess around with this until you're very conversant with how to manipulate file directories, file locations. And for example, in the, in the instance where you want to copy the key to another server, you should know how to remember where you saved it and what file name you used. So leave it as it is, just hit enter. It's asking for a password. You don't need to add a password at this stage. You only do it for security reasons, for extra security, okay? But it will just defeat the whole purpose of using an SSH key because when you want to connect using SSH, it will still ask you for a password. But to avoid that scenario, you don't need to add a password here. So enter, enter. And that's it. The SSH key for Tosin has been created. And we can see it by running, uh, we can cat the file. So cat home, we can just copy this. It's already here. Um, so this is the private key. And this is the public key. So I can view the private key like this. Um, paste. Sorry, I forgot to add this. Okay. So this is the private key. It's just a bunch of gibberish. And this is the public key. I'll just add the pub. This is a public key. Okay. So I'm done with this. I can go back to my Vagrant user by typing um, exit or logout. If I type exit, what happens is Tosin will still run in the background, but she will not be logged out of the system. It will just go back to Vagrant. Um, if I do um, um, log out, it logs Tosin out of the shell completely. Okay, so, um, well, apparently from what you've seen, the exit command still calls logout. So essentially it's still logging out to Tosync, which is fine, no issues. So this is how you would create the users, the user groups, add a user to a user group, edit the sudoers file, generate an SSH key and done, that's it.